As we learn more about the universe, we are continually amazed at the astonishing diversity and beauty we find. Though marred by the curse, the universe still exhibits the handiwork of the Lord. By learning more about the intricacies of the celestial realm, we gain an infinitesimal glimpse into the infinite mind of God. One extraordinary aspect of creation is the incredible range of sizes and distances we observe. The International Space Station orbits approximately 200 miles above the surface of the Earth. This is far higher than any aircraft, and yet it really isn't very far into space. The Earth itself is nearly 8,000 miles in diameter, and yet the expanse beyond extends to distances that we cannot truly comprehend. The space station and other man-made satellites represent only the surface of a celestial ocean. The Apollo astronauts traversed a much greater distance. Traveling at the speed of a bullet, they took three days to reach the moon. The moon lies at an average distance of 240,000 miles from Earth. This is the farthest that human beings have traveled into space. Yet, the Earth's distance from the sun is 400 times greater. The Earth orbits at an average distance of 93 million miles from the sun. But the outer planets orbit at much greater distances. Neptune orbits 30 times farther from the Sun than Earth does. The dwarf worlds Pluto and Eris are even farther out. Their orbits do not lie in the same plane as the planets. The orbits of all the planets could be contained in a cube that is 6 billion miles on a side. Yet, the distance to the stars is far greater. The next nearest star system is Alpha Centauri. How many solar systems would fit between the Sun and Alpha Centauri? The answer is an astonishing 4,278. It is a distance that is almost impossible to imagine. we can see that Alpha Centauri consists of more than one star. The combined light from these two stars appears as a single star in our night sky. Alpha Centauri A is the larger and brighter of these two stars. It is a glowing orb of hydrogen gas, very similar to the sun, though slightly larger. Its surface temperature is around 6,000 degrees Celsius, the same as the sun, and so it has a similar color. Alpha Centauri B is slightly smaller and cooler than the sun. Alpha Centauri A and B orbit each other every 80 years. A third distant star of this system called Proxima Centauri is faintly visible. The constellations look very similar to the way they look from our solar system. This indicates that most bright stars are far more distant than Alpha Centauri. The Big Dipper is a familiar sight, and so is the constellation Cassiopeia. Except there is now an extra star in this constellation. That is the Sun. As seen from Alpha Centauri, the Sun is just a bright star. The planets cannot be seen at all from this distance. As we journey back to the solar system, the constellations change only slightly.
The sun is over 100 times larger than Earth in diameter. And while most stars are smaller than this, some of the brighter stars in our night sky are considerably larger. Sirius is the brightest star in our nighttime sky. Sirius is bright because it is relatively nearby, a mere 50 trillion miles away. It is almost twice the diameter of the sun. The light blue color indicates that Sirius has a surface temperature of around 9,000 degrees Celsius. So, blue stars are considerably hotter than the sun, whereas red stars are cooler. Pollux is a member of the constellation Gemini. It is a giant star, nearly 10 times larger than the sun in diameter. The constellation Orion is a familiar sight in our winter sky. It has a number of stars even larger than Pollux. The center star of Orion's belt is called Alnilon. It is a blue supergiant. 25 suns could be lined up across its disk. Blue stars like Alnilon are very luminous. They expend their fuel quickly and cannot last billions of years. So blue stars remind us that the universe is much younger than is generally claimed. Secular astronomers are forced to assume that stars like Alnilam have spontaneously formed in the recent past. However, star formation is riddled with theoretical problems and has never been observed. Rigel is also a blue supergiant. It stretches nearly 70 suns across. As amazing as this seems, even larger stars have been discovered. Betelgeuse is one of the largest stars in the solar neighborhood. It is a red supergiant, even larger than Rigel. Betelgeuse is roughly 600 times the diameter of the sun. If Betelgeuse were placed at the center of our solar system, we would be inside it. Betelgeuse would completely engulf the inner planets. The size of Betelgeuse pales in comparison to its distance from our planet. Astronomers often use the term light year when referring to stellar distances. A light year is a measure of distance, not time. One light year is roughly six trillion miles. Betelgeuse is over 400 light years away, or 2,400 trillion miles. Yet, it's one of the nearest of Orion's bright stars. Alnilam lies over 1,000 light years away. Now we will travel much deeper into space, several hundred light years toward Orion's belt. On our journey, we get a sense of the astonishing distance to these stars. The Hyades star cluster is visible on our right. We pass Bellatrix, the nearest of Orion's bright stars. Next out, Betelgeuse slowly drifts across the scene. A myriad of faint stars continually glides past our field of view. We are now roughly 400 light years away from home. As we pick up speed, we pass by Rigel and Safe. Finally, we reach the nearest stars of Orion's belt. We have traveled a distance of five million billion miles into space. We glance back in the direction of the solar system. It is located here. However, the sun could not be seen from this distance without a telescope. It is a humbling experience to think of our entire solar system reduced to an invisible point. The constellations are completely unrecognizable from this distance. Although many of the same stars are visible, they no longer connect in a way that makes sense. Since we define the constellations as seen from our solar system, they point the way home. And as we travel back to the sun, they return to their familiar shapes. We now know that our sun is not the only system with planets. 
Astronomers have detected one or more planets around each one of the indicated stars. Several hundred extrasolar planets are now known to exist, and it seems likely that countless more remain undetected in the depths of space. In most cases, the planet itself cannot be seen directly. It is lost in the powerful glare of its host star. However, astronomers are able to measure the slight wobble the planet gravitationally induces on its star. This technique allows us to estimate the orbital period and minimum mass of the planet. In some rare cases, the planet passes directly in front of its star, as seen from Earth. The star V376 Pegasi has a planet that crosses its disk precisely every 3.52 days. Astronomers can measure the drop in the star's brightness and determine the size of the planet. Of course, this technique is only possible for the handful of star systems that are nearly edge-on relative to us. This planet is larger than Jupiter, but it orbits 20 times closer to its star than Earth orbits the Sun. This so-called hot Jupiter is a serious problem for secular models of planet formation. These scenarios had predicted that gas giants can only form far away from their parent star. Yet the vast majority of extrasolar planets so far detected are hot Jupiters. It's a difficult problem for secular notions, but not for biblical creation. Such diversity is what we would expect from the biblical God. This is the Upsilon Andromedae system. It has three known planets. All three are larger than Jupiter and orbit remarkably close to their star. The innermost planet is estimated to be 20 times larger than Earth in diameter. Its proximity to the star makes its temperature over 1100 degrees Celsius. Since current technology is not able to observe these worlds directly, we can only speculate what they look like. But we can be certain that their richness declares the majesty of their maker. In addition to stars and planets, the universe contains nebulae. A nebula is a cloud of hydrogen and helium gas spread over a vast region of space. Many nebulae are very hot and give off light. They are some of the most colorful objects in the cosmos. Some nebulae are relatively small, produced by the ejected gas of a single star. These are called planetary nebulae because many of them are round and appear like an out-of-focus planet. Planetary nebulae are quite common. Other nebulae are much larger, spanning many light years. These amazing creations can rightly be called the artwork of God. Our summer evening sky contains a number of other objects called globular clusters. They are too faint to be detected with the unaided eye but are easily seen in binoculars or a small telescope. The globular cluster M4 is found just to the right of the red star Antares. Through binoculars, M4 appears as a faint, fuzzy blur. However, a telescope reveals that this blur is the combined light of thousands of stars. This is the most distant object we've visited so far. M4 is 7,000 light years away from Earth. That's 40 million billion miles. This globular cluster contains roughly 100,000 stars, yet it is only 50 light years across. This incredibly dense star field would be a wonderful sight. In addition to these countless stars, M4 also contains a strange object called a pulsar. It is thought to be the crushed core of an exploded star. Powerful beams of radiation emanate from the star's magnetic poles. When a beam sweeps past our field of view, we perceive a bright flash. However, if our solar system were not in the path of the radiation beams, we would not detect these pulses. By measuring the precise timing of these pulses, astronomers have learned that this pulsar is orbited by a planet. As with all extrasolar planets, 
we can only guess how this planet may appear. The view from this world must be absolutely breathtaking. On the other hand, it would be difficult to see beyond this bright star field. If we lived in a globular star cluster, we might never know about the vast universe beyond. M4 is merely one of more than a hundred globular clusters that belong to our galaxy. This is our galaxy, the Milky Way. It spans 80,000 light years across and contains more than 100 billion stars. The Milky Way is a spiral galaxy. The brighter stars are concentrated into arms that wrap around the disk. Since our solar system is within this disk, we see the Milky Way as a cloudy band in our night sky. No human being or spacecraft has seen our galaxy from the outside, as shown here. It is difficult to grasp just how large our galaxy is. Our solar system is located here. In fact, with the exception of M4, all the stars and planets we've visited are within this little ring. The Milky Way is a remarkable demonstration of God's power. But what's even more amazing is that our galaxy is merely one of billions. Every one of these faint clouds is an entire galaxy. As we pan upward, we see a strange band where galaxies seem to be missing. This is called the zone of avoidance and is aligned with the disk of our galaxy. Although many galaxies are undoubtedly in this region, gas and dust in our own galaxy prevent us from seeing them. Further up, we see a massive grouping of galaxies called the Virgo Cluster. It contains over 2,000 galaxies and is 50 million light years away from Earth. At the heart of the Virgo Cluster lies the giant elliptical galaxy M87, which has over one trillion stars. Galaxies come in a variety of shapes and sizes. Each one is a glorious demonstration of God's limitless power. Critics of the Bible have suggested that it is impossible for the light from these galaxies to reach Earth in only 6,000 years. They claim that these galaxies prove the universe is billions of years old. But in fact, there are several different ways to get light to travel these distances in a short period of time. These include gravitational time dilation, alternate synchrony conventions, and others. In fact, spiral galaxies are a serious problem for the notion of billions of years. Their spiral arms contain vast numbers of blue stars, which cannot last billions of years. Also, spiral galaxies rotate differentially, meaning the inner portions rotate faster than the outer portions. So the spiral arms cannot last billions of years. They would be twisted beyond recognition, but it's not a problem for the biblical time scale. From the Virgo cluster, our entire galaxy appears as a grain of sand, lost in a vast ocean of galaxies. Yet the galaxies shown here are only a small portion of the cosmos. Beyond this distance, astronomers have cataloged only certain regions of the visible universe. At last, we begin to see the large-scale structure of the universe. The galaxies are organized into a complete tapestry of strings and voids, for clarity, only a few selected regions are shown here. This is the universe, or at least as much of it as our present understanding makes possible. Just imagine the power involved as all these galaxies leapt into existence at God's command. And yet the Bible describes the creation of all this with the single phrase, He made the stars also. The psalmist writes, when I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, what is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him?
We will now travel back home by zooming in by a factor of 10 every four seconds. The little circle is 10 times smaller than the large one. Every time we see a new circle, we've traveled 90% of the remaining distance home. The strings and voids of galaxies seem to disappear as we approach home. We plunge into the nearest several dozen galaxies called the local group. The Milky Way becomes visible at last. We're approaching our galaxy from almost directly above. We enter the Milky Way between two of the spiral arms. We can now see that these arms are comprised of billions of stars. As we approach our solar system, the stars slow down and converge to their familiar positions. We pause briefly to note that we are now able to recognize the constellations. Orion is visible on our left. The sun is dead ahead, but from this distance it appears as a faint star. At last, we reach the solar system. The orbits of the outer planets are highlighted. We can now see the orbits of the inner planets, but the Earth itself is still invisible from this distance. The Earth may seem an insignificant speck compared to all that God created. Yet, this tiny world is where God placed the crowning jewels of his creation. Of all that the Lord created, Human beings alone have the privilege of being made in God's own image. And though we have rebelled against our Creator, He's paid the penalty for our treason. It was on this small planet where the Creator of the universe became a man and died our death. He then rose again and has offered forgiveness for all who call upon His name. It is fitting that we should honor God for who He is and for what He has done.